Are you a pervert or something? Okay. The whales have a 15 foot penis. Hold on a sec. I just National want to. Graphic says it. I'm sorry, Ken. You, you cut out there. They have a 15 what? The whales have a 15 foot penis. I didn't cut out. You heard me. Google it yourself. I mean, all, all I asked him to do was differentiate it from cause and effect. And he says that if then is literally a cause and effect. And then he asked me if uh, it requires foreknowledge. And I was trying to answer that question. And I don't think in this particular context, it requires foreknowledge. In actual uh, programmatic coding of like uh, computers and, and other things, it does require foreknowledge of it. But I don't think in the context of DNA code, it does require foreknowledge because because at, at the heart of it, they're chemical reactions. And these chemical reactions happen regardless of what happens after it. So in evolutionary theory, what it actually says in evolutionary theory is that these chemical reactions occur and through a long, long process of, uh, you could say, trial and error and just things uh, chemically reacting with other things that it eventually led down a path to where they operate like this. That's what evolutionary theory actually says. So it has a naturalistic uh, explanation that is perfectly reasonable and in line with uh, how we think about uh, other natural things that occur in our reality. So I'm just kind of curious what to him screams supernatural in this whole idea that there are if, uh, if then gates in DNA code, when it seems to me like these if then gates are are really just cause and effect of chemical reactions. And over long periods of time, these chemical reactions have resulted in processes that have existed for a long time. Okay, go ahead, uh, LPP. Take as much time as you need now. I'm not really sure what kind of a question that was. Um, the, I guess the complete and utter fascinating ignorance of the talking point just spewed by my opponent is that it is a well-established premise that deterministic chemistry, and I'm paraphrasing a quote here, deterministic chemistry no longer accounts for what we are discovering in biology. And I mean, I can literally pull up the paper and show you the quote if you want. I and mean, you can read the entire paper. Well, I mean, I don't um, have but, to read the paper. It's my, it's my I'm turn. Right? So, tell so me I, how. Well, I literally explained one of them to you, which obviously went over your head. But the okay. let's go let's go with the second one. So we have you claim it is nothing but um, cascade uh, chemical reactions. Well, what we're discovering with structural biology is that things are happening in literally different spatiotemporal regions that are happening simultaneously to another one that are then used in conjunction. But there was no initial. Uh, cause and effect of the process to occur. So when you look at that way, you have, if, from a reality perspective, you have two separate functions being executed simultaneously, but then conjoined to have a alternative uh, outcome. And this is, this is reduced to such a simplistic, well, it's not simplistic, but such a fundamental component of life, which is the ribosome and the translation of mRNA into a polypeptide, that there is no chemical reaction between the codon and the amino acid. It is literally being read. This is a recognized premise in biology, in cellular biology, information theory, that there is literally a read of data being executed by the ribosome. There is no chemical reaction. So to argue that there's nothing but cause and effect chemistry is absolutely eviscerated at the fundamental of the creation of a protein. There is no chemical reaction between them. So maybe you can explain to me what it means for it to read the RNA. It is registering that it is the correct amino acid which matches to uh, the codon. But even if, and the reason that we know that it's being read beyond doubt is that even if there is a incorrect or a correct codon anti-codon match but the incorrect amino acid is being transferred by that tRNA, the ribosome then ejects um, that amino acid because it's not the correct one. And mm -hmm. it's, this is also a registered uh, premise in all the things that are happening with DNA computation systems that are being built right now. 
and we've reprogrammed ribosomes to read syntax that's been devised by humans. So like this is not a this is not a questioned premise in uh, genetics and biology. It's only questioned by atheists who are desperate to avoid it. No, I, I reject that notion entirely. Um, so uh, I, I don't understand. Hold on, I, I don't understand how you you're not how you're not seeing that it is in fact a chemical reactions when one chemical reacts with some uh, organelle, and in that in reaction it generates another chemical. Like this sounds like a chemical reaction. So, I mean, how exactly is it not? A, well, how do you, I, I guess, let, let's get down uh, to it. Like, what do you define as a chemical reaction? Exactly? Dude, did you listen to a word that I said or did it just fly over your head? There is no chemical reaction between the codon of the mRNA and the amino acid. There is no chemical reaction. This is a well-recognized premise. And if you want, I'll I, guess, I guess I just simply don't recognize that particular premise because you have you literally have chemicals interacting with uh, organelles and and those organelles are interacting okay. with, okay. with do those you, things. Do you know anything these about these the, chemical interactions? Do you know anything about protein synthesis? I mean, w- 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 I don't think that we have to get into like protein synthesis and everything. Well, if you're, you're going to argue that denying that chemical reactions, that chemical um, reactions um, happening. explain this, and I'm literally telling you that it is a recognized fact that there is no chemical reaction in the reading process of the data set, which is represented by the codon in an mRNA, and the amino acid is now being inserted into the polypeptide sequence, which turned into a protein. This is a recognized premise. It's a question, it's a gigantic question in origin of life research of, huh, we do have arbitrary data values that we have to account for. What the heck do you think is one of the fundamental things they're doing in origin of life research? There's papers that are being published this year trying to come up with theories of how they can explain this arbitrary value assignment to the genetic code. Like there's papers out the yin yang on this and you're claiming that's not, that's false. How? No, no, that's not anything that I said. It would, it would behoove you not to straw man me or to put words in my mouth. I'm just saying that that's, that's not how adult conversations work. Okay. So, um, I still don't, I still don't, ha- I don't understand, regardless of whether or not I'm right or wrong about chemical reactions in reading uh, RNA, uh, regardless of that, how does this exactly apply to evolution and whether or not it's natural? Uh, okay, so going back to one of the fundamental points of all of this is if a programming code base is required for functions and processes and capacity that is required for biological systems to exist requires arbitrary data value assignment and prescriptive knowledge and formal information structure in order for the simplest elements of life to exist. How do you explain that occurring through undirected process? Because if you're going to go down that rabbit hole and say it can happen through undirected process, then let's go back to your assertion that uh, no, PHP couldn't exist without a designer. So how could a computer code come into existence? How could binary come into existence without an intelligent agent to assign the values to each side of the data set? Uh, well, as far as binary goes, I don't think that uh, you could uh, get that naturally. Uh, if there if there is some natural reason why those things would exist, then they would be natural. But I also don't think that binary code is directly uh, directly correlates to uh, genetic code. Okay, so you do realize that MIT, Cambridge, and several universities in uh, India, I believe, have actually literally written their own programming languages that translate from binary directly into genetic programming right and well, but, but, i mean regard, regardless hold on, hold on, hold on. Hang hang if you're going to mention I, something you got to let me I'm, you got to respond to it there john directly, you can't I'm just direct, me. i'm going to directly respond to your first part of your question now the you said specifically that you did not see how binary could be corollary to uh, genetic code okay so are you now number 1 are you admitting that there is a code DNA can be interpreted as a code. Is it literal or figurative? Uh, 
it's it, I, 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 it is my belief that DNA can be interpreted as a code. So not a literal one. But it's ultimately a chemical that goes through different chemical reactions, different processes. So, so were you paying attention at all during my opening? I mean, yes, I've been paying attention to Okay, you. Okay, so are you suggesting that you should fly over to the Royal Society and tell them that it's not a literal code? I would still appreciate you not, you know, uh, doing questions like that because obviously that's not what I'm suggesting. Obviously, I'm not an there, expert. It's exactly what field. you're suggesting. And you're not an expert in this field, John. It's exactly so what you're suggesting, my, my, bro. Point, my point is, though, that the context in which we are talking about code is different for binary as it is when we're talking about DNA code. Okay, those okay, okay, are, let me those are let me things that. that don't necessarily correlate. Okay, let, let me address Because that. we have natural – expl- I'm still talking. So we have natural problem. explanations for how the DNA code evolved. No, we, we do not. We have explanations for that. What we don't have a natural explanation for is how binary code could have come about without humans inventing it, knowing to interpret low uh, voltage values as zero and high val- uh, voltage values as one, and then arranging them in specific orders in order to communicate meaningful messages. What we do have for DNA, though, is chemical processes that occur, and over long periods of time, those chemical processes processes result in different configurations of life that either die out and are no more because they're not um, they're, they're not keen on on surviving in whatever environment and then you have these other processes that arise these other chemical reactions that uh, happen that do allow the organisms to survive and they keep procreating. They keep, they keep uh, changing their information through uh, reproduction and different mutations. And uh, it, it just keeps evolving into these new processes. So do you, I hope that you can kind of see now how I'm, separating out the two different contexts in which these codes have arisen. Okay, one so, was definitely okay. man-made and the other one was definitely natural. Okay, so I'm just going to be very direct and say that, Godless, um, I don't know how you put engineer at the, after your, at the second part of your name, because if you, number one, your level of ignorance on this topic is so mind-bending. I do not know how you actually think you're making a remotely coherent separation of these things. Okay, so first off, uh, how is binary and genetic code corollary? Okay, so uh a in binary equals zero one zero 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 one in uh genetic code aug equals start i mean there's syntax for what this codon this triplet of base pairs equals does not become does not transform into is equal to this amino acid i mean this is such basic logic I, I really don't understand how you're trying to argue this is separate. Number two, as I've already stated before you made this assertion, um, your claim that we just already know that the genetic code uh, evolved naturally. Did you not listen to a word that I have said? Because I have addressed this multiple times and stated clearly that we don't know how it evolved. What the heck do you think the $10 million is on the line for? Right now, as we speak, that video I showed from the Royal Society, that was from June of last year. That money has not been won. There are papers, after, paper after paper, I read several of them this past two weeks on the latest quote-unquote quasi-theories of how it could possibly have come into existence. They do crazy crap like, oh, well, if only 50% of it had to come into existence at one time, then maybe at some point, if the wobble effect kicked in at the very end, the last stage, then we could have a code. It's like, get out of town. So some of the most vital components of this code, uh, they don't have to exist right away, even though our logic doesn't apply unless we have it at the front end. I mean, number, are you not, is it not computing the direct correlate between binary and uh, genetics? Because there's papers we can pull up right now on how they've done studies comparing the genetic code to a literal million other possible co- code bases and found that it's the most optimal. So was that all hypothetical or were they actually doing direct comparison to a code base and its 
redundancy, its uh, robustness, and its ability to store data. <clears throat> I mean, evolutionary theory would suggest that the reason why it's the most optimal is because of the fact that it's had millions of years in order to work out certain kinks that, you know, so, so some of the processes that would have resulted what would not have been the most optimal uh, path. So it seems to me like evolution, naturalistic evolution has uh, just as good of an explanation as your God did it explanation, if not more, if not better, a better explanation for it. So, I mean, I, I really, I, I can't remember everything that you said in that Gish Gallup of, uh, you know, I, I do remember you questioning whether or not I'm an engineer, or how I can put an engineer after my name, which, I mean, I'm not even going to dignify uh, because that that's just an ad hominem low blow attack. And it's honestly sad, Thanks you know, seeing that come from you. Uh, it's not surprising. I, just I told you what I did. What did you do? It. You dismissed my arguments. So back up your claims. I'm sorry, Ken. You, you cut out there. They have a 15 what? The whales have a 15 foot penis. I didn't cut out. You heard me. Google it yourself. Google it yourself. The whales have a 15 foot penis. I'm sorry, Ken. You, you cut out there. They have a 15 what? Are you a pervert or something? Okay. The whales have a 15 foot.